This is a tutorial on how to use MIDI controllers with Show Editor. Show Editor provides many options how you can use MIDI controllers and there are many possibilities to configure it. So first of all we opened the live interface with the standard patterns just to give you an impression how it works and then I open the options section head for the MIDI DMX tab and then I need first of all need to select the MIDI device. In my case this is an APC Mini. I select it for both in and out device and what you can see already here is that it reacts with flashing colors. So we activated the MIDI in and MIDI out now we need to set up the MIDI input routing. If we click on that, we get a window with many different options for the live window. So you can see we can specify how to select the figures, the size, rotation, whatever, different options. And we can assign all these options to certain buttons or faders. The most important tool is the MIDI monitor here because the MIDI monitor reacts on what we do here on the MIDI controller and it gives us feedback which button we just pressed and which address this button actually has because without this monitor we wouldn't know which address we need to specify in here. So. We close the options window in the back because we don't need that anymore, but we need this MIDI assignment window. You can imagine that these options here correspond with the faders up here or with the figures specified down here. So for example, if we want to assign the size to a certain fader, we need to first find out what this fader has as values. So what I do, I want to have the size on this fader. So I move this fader and we see there is two values. One value is data one and we have one value that is data two. This data one value is always the same and the data two value is not. So First of all, we need to specify the MIDI message, which is 176 in our case. Then we have a data value as condition. This is the value that's always the same. So if we use a fader, it's the same value. In this case, it's 48. And it's data 1. So we need to specify this as data 1, 48. Now we need to take the value from the other data source because this is the different values we're getting when moving the faders. Oh, by the way, we just assigned it and you can already see the size fader moving. You see that up here? It's already moving. So I save the MIDI assignment in this case, just to make sure. Say so, okay, MIDI assignment APC mini. Okay, I saved this one. So, what we did is we managed to assign. Yes, I want to use that as standard assignment. What we did, we managed to use the assignment here for this setup. So again, if I move the fader and you see all of them are on size, I can also use different. So you're not, you do not get irritated by this one. It's just the size fader. Good. So for the size, 
the same same way you do with rotation, compression, whatever. So this all works the same way. But what is different? We have a figure. We don't want to have the figure assigned to a fader. We want to have figure assigned to a button. So what we need to do is we need to get the figure assigned to a button. First of all, most important, we need to get our MIDI monitor back on. Because without the MIDI monitor, we would know which settings are where. So for the figures, you see, we have two different challenges. First of all, we need to specify what these buttons are like in terms of the data source and also we need to assign every single frame to a certain MIDI value. To do so we first of all have to figure out what the values of the very buttons are. So to do so I press the button and you see You see that there is a constant value. We have the MIDI message on 144, and we have a constant data 2 as a value, and we have data 1 changing depending on the figure we have. So for the message number, we type 144, and data 2 is a constant value. So in this case, it's 127. And we use the data value we use from data one, not from data two. In this time, in this case, it's upside down. It's a different different setting than for the faders. We save the media arrangement again, just to make sure. Yes, again, a standard setting. So what we did now is we said, okay, this a certain figure should react to these values, but we need to specify which figure here should use which MIDI value. So what we need to do is we still need the MIDI monitor, but I can close this MIDI assignment and let's move on to this window. We have figure one, for example. With figure one, we need to we want to have figure one be assigned to this button. Okay. To do so, we need to check which values we get in the MIDI status. We see it's data 56. So to assign this one, we need to set the value for the MIDI mapping to 56 and this is it it's already this one is 56 so we need to specify 56 select 56 and apply okay next one we want to find out this button what this button is like and we see it's 57 okay so this one here we select 57 apply and that's it so this one 56 this one 57 so 56 57 and this is how you still continue 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 this most probably is 58 let's give it a try without having a look at the midi monitor apply let's see 57, 58. That's it. So with doing that, you can assign all the different buttons to different features of Show Editor. Have a look. Play with the MIDI messages here with the MIDI monitor. It tells you all the information you need for configuring your MIDI device. In this case, we just configured the Archive APC Mini, but you can also use the APC 40. You can also use um, 
different MIDI consoles, whatever you like. There is just one thing that may be difficult, and this is the APC40 MK1, because this one has a different way of dealing with the MIDI signal than other devices do. But even with this device, you should be able to do a basic configuration.